Hello and welcome to another Q&A's with me, Ben Pearson. Why does it feel like it's story time and I'm going to read something really good to you? <laughs> We're a live venue, you're going to see people mulling around in the background. We are at Ace American Cars uh, in Gildersum, so question and answers, let's go. Next. Tristan says, what will happen if someone gets pulled in their driving test? Oof, if someone got pulled on the driving test, um, it depends what you're getting pulled for. Now, if you got pulled out of something like there's a collision down the road or the police are stopping you because something's just happened to your car, nothing, you just go on on your driving test. If the police pull you due to something you've done in your driving test, you're obviously going to fail your driving test because you shouldn't have been pulled by the police. Um, so a 50-50 split, if you've committed an offence or you've got a minor, minor, minor or major, uh, yeah, you're going to fail your test, unfortunately. If not, just take it on chin, smile, uh, say thank you, officer, and drive off. Next question. What do you think to the Kent response car, police ambulance in one? Oh, uh, yeah, so we had this in, in West Yorkshire. Um, police officers used to go out with fast paramedic response vehicles so they could go to people with either mental health issues or people that were drunk with weapons so they could be dealt with by the police but obviously dealt with by ambulance or a fast responder. I think it's a great thing to do but we still need to have that little bit of uh, where we're going with it and what it's for so either train paramedics up to have law knowledge and be able to act like police or train police officers up to paramedic level but then you're blurring the lines because where do you become a paramedic and where do you become a police officer? You lose so many police officers due to ambulance stuff and then if you need an ambulance and they're in cells, it's not going to work. But if it's specialist Friday night stuff, fight night, football matches, I think it's a good thing and it should work. Tom Pickard says, have you ever crashed a car? Next question. <laughs> yes, I have. I'll put a photo up now while I'm talking about it. I've crashed lots of cars. Uh, the majority is not my fault, the majority is due to the job we do, the tea packing, the ramming. Uh, but there are some occasions where I've gone through traffic lights like in the photo you can see now, and then I've smashed the vehicle up, take it on chin, got a drive awareness course. Um, I had to go for drive training, sorry, I had to go back to drive training for another course. Um, and yeah, uh, possibility is you care, so it happens to everybody and we can't say it done. Mike says, if you could have any car to be a police car, what would it be and why? Oh. So you could go back in days and you'd be like a Lancia Evo or a Subaru. I think today, if you're going to pick a traffic car, it'd have to be something like an Audi RS4, RS6. Um, it's, you've got to understand about a traffic car. It's not all about out, outright speed. It's not about doing 170 miles an hour because most pursuits don't go over 150 miles an hour anyway. Um, it's about handling. It's about cornering. It's about 4x4. Uh, and it's about the initial knot, 60 but It's got to be justifiable and proportionate. You can't be driving around in a £300,000 car and getting rammed every week. It just won't work. So you've got to take it as it's got to be a, a usable vehicle. And when it gets damaged, it's got to be a bolt on bolt off parts. Um, so yeah, I'll be looking at an RS4 or something like that. I think it'd make a great pursuit car. Alex says, I got a speeding ticket of £650. What is a victim surcharge and why is it so much? First of all, slow down. Uh, no excuse for that. A victim surcharge is technically you've got your fines when you go to court, but you've got to also pay for the court as well. So you'll have a victim surcharge, and it's all based to do with who you are, your financial outgoings, uh, and what, you've, what you're what you going to be earning or what you've got in the bank, so to speak. Um, so I think it was at McPartland, he got caught drink driving, and normal people will get a six £700 fine. I think he, he ended up with an £85,000 fine, something of that nature, because it went on his earnings and what it were worth. So the bigger the fine, it's because you're worth a little bit more money, so to speak. I know it's unfair, but it's down to the courts, and you've got to pay for the paperwork and the people to be in the courts as well. So that's what it's all for. It's Doug says, why do, I think that says solicitors never get arrested? Or politicians. Oh, oh sorry. What? It's Doug says, why are politicians never arrested? Why are the police scared to stand up for the people they're supposed to protect? Right, first of all, there's not one person on this earth when I were in the job that I wouldn't arrest. Um, if they were there and they'd done something criminal and it were an arrestable offence, they'd get lifted. Um, it'd only be for the uh, the way society works. So if I went to try and put my hands on the Queen, so to speak, I know you couldn't do. 
or, or the king you'd be dived upon, but if a member of public or a politician or a celebrity, they all fall on the same basis. Why they never arrested in the Met, or I think they are arrested, but why some people never arrested, they might have different protocols. Uh, and you've got to understand there's things where you don't have to be arrested, where you can do a voluntary attendance into the police station. You're still charged with the offence, but being arrested gives you different rights under legislation like PACE, uh, where you don't have to have that. Just say, for instance, for house searches, some people don't need to be arrested, um, such as 85-year-old Mrs Miggins. She can come in at the police station or her own accord. Um, so some things like that, but yeah, don't ever say that we wouldn't lock someone up when we would do. Um, I don't care who it was, but if they'd done wrong, they'd get arrested. And I've even had this question, uh, this brought up with members of my own family. If I were on duty and they'd done something wrong, they'd have got locked, locked up. So sorry about that, but yeah, I'd have locked them up. Canine Shadow says, how hard is it for you to be a cop one minute and a civilian the next? Uh, that's probably the hardest time in my life to do that. To be a cop one minute and to be a civilian next is so hard work. Um, it's not the fact of, well, you're not doing this anymore or you're not power drunk or power hungry. It's the fact that you've spent 19 years of your life um, being told what to do, uh, what to wear, when to work, and then to be not told that, it's a loss of identity. So you're waking up in the morning, you don't know who you are, you don't know what you're meant to do. There were times when I was getting my kit on and I was getting in the car to go to work and I had nowhere to go. And if I got to the police station, they wouldn't let me in but you want to do it, but you, you can't do it. So it's bred into you, it's like soldiers and things like that. It's just bred into you. Uh, it's that discipline thing. So for for a year, you're waking up at the same time, five o'clock every morning, ready to go to work, and it's just not happening. So it's very hard, and it was one of the hardest times of my life. Jay says, how do you run with the kit on? Oh, God. Well, I don't know if you can look at me now, but I've got man boobs. I've got a big... <laughs> I've got a big bit of fat around my stomach. I can't run anywhere. I've got a knacker back. Um, so how you do it on the job, I, I didn't know, uh, and I still don't know. You've got to work out. You've got to be fit. You've got to be strong. It's very, very hard work. And I used to say, if you don't catch people after the first 50 yards, give it up as a bad job, because you're just getting up getting more and more tired. Um, yeah, it's hard work. And when you're weighing another two, three stone on top of what you're wearing or, or what you're carrying already, it's not for faint hearted. And I know there's going to be loads and loads of comments of people saying, well, I see the police in the fat, or I've done this and I've done that. Just because some people might look big doesn't mean they can't run and they're not strong. I mean, look at some rugby players. They're literally ginormous. They're big and round. Um, but they're strong as an ox and they can run for a long time. So just because someone doesn't look the part, please don't underestimate them. B says, fastest you've driven. Uh, I've answered this a few times. Somewhere between 158 to 163. Um, and that's because you've got a thing called vast car in your car and it calibrated after a certain amount of time so it'd go off, calibrate, go off, calibrate. Um, the speedo were off at the time so it'd gone all the way around. Uh, it's not nice, it's, it's a horrible feeling, it's not something to sit there and be proud of. It's a scary point when you think if a tyre pops now I'm dead. Uh, but at the time we are doing it, we are doing his jobs and that's what we had to do to arrest someone. So uh, yeah, not proud of it. Speeding's not big, not clever, please don't do it. This one, and I think this says, this is by Matthew Bowman. When a pursuit starts, do you give them extra tickets when caught if they speed or go through red lights? Fantastic question. This has never been asked to me before. Um, no, the reason being is you are charged with extra offences. So when a pursuit starts and it stops, they're automatically arrested. They're arrested for suspicion of theft of motor vehicle and dangerous driving and fail to stop. We don't deal with it at the roadside. When they go to the cells and they're interviewed, all the charges are brought to light afterwards. But you wouldn't charge for a speeding going through red traffic light. It'd all be under one offence, which is dangerous driving. If there are other offences on top, like theft of motor vehicle, we'd charge for that. If there's going equipped, we'd charge for that. But we wouldn't put loads of separate road traffic offences in one charge. It's one charge of dangerous driving. And that was a prison sentence, and you can't get better than that from running red light. Nathan says, how long is the universe? <laughs> Six foot eight, and on a map about two inch. Uh, how long is the universe? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, it's something I'd never know. Uh, you, you obviously know by asking that, you know that I'm not right bright. Uh, and answering a question like that, I'm just going to look stupid. So I'm going to say about four miles. Uh, that's probably about as good as you're going to get from me.
This is the last question, Ben. All right, last question. Thank you so and much. It's from Ben. What is it, Bev? Ben. 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 Bev. Okay, Barry. Right. Cliff. Nice to meet you, Cliff. I'm Ben. Ben Gray says, what is the one thing you would change with the police nationwide? What is that change? Oh, God, we're going to get political now, aren't we? If you ask me, I think everything needs revamping. I think there's two... We've gone too far one way. I think what we need to do is go back. There's this thing where you've got auditors putting cameras in people's faces, demanding this, demanding that. The police should be, for one thing, save life, protect people, and investigate and detect crime. And unless that's happening, we shouldn't be getting involved. We're not social workers. Um, we're not carers. Um, we're not, I don't know, we're not politicians. We should do that. And if you don't, have a victim or you're not a criminal in any of those, you'd never really meet the police because we'd be doing it to the people that deserve it. Uh, so I think there's a, there's, a, there's a massive scope for change here. Um, and unless we still go backwards and start rewinding, we're never going to get any further forward. So, yeah, I think that's a great question. I think it's a great question to end on. There are your question answers. Thanks for watching. Comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.